Today was race day at Cheju Racecourse Park. First, I'll give you a little historical background about horse racing in Korea and conclude with pony racing here on Cheju Island. Horse racing in Korea has origins tracing all the way back to 1898, when a foreign language institute operated by the government conducted donkey races during a sports rally. I can change. Please give me another chance. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Next. Apparently, nobody bet on the donkeys. Modern horse racing made its debut in 1922 with the Chosun Racing Club. Six years later, the Sin Sol Dong Racecourse in Seoul opened in 1928. Eventually, in 1933, the Japanese imposed a rule in which only incorporated racing clubs were allowed to conduct horse races in Korea. The Chosun Horse Racing Authority was formed in the same year and was eventually renamed the Korea Racing Authority in 1945. During the Korean War, horse racing came to a halt, and the Sin Sol Dong Racecourse was destroyed. The Korean Racing Authority completed the construction of the new Tuksum Racecourse in Seoul in 1954, just before the end of the war. It served as the main hub for horse racing in Korea until 1989, when it was relocated to where Seoul Racecourse Park is today, at Gwacheon in southern Seoul. Back here on the island, the Cheju Racecourse began construction in 1987 as an effort to preserve the ponies native to Cheju Island. The racecourse, situated only 15 kilometers southwest of Cheju City, was completed in 1990. The third racecourse in Korea opened several years later in Busan in 2005. What makes the Cheju Racecourse unique is that instead of the traditional thoroughbred racing that they have in Seoul and Busan, Cheju also hosts pony racing. The races on the island usually take place on Friday and Saturday, starting at around 11 a.m. You can expect about seven races per day. However, in Seoul and Busan, the longer thoroughbred races typically operate on Saturday and Sunday, and they have up to 10 or 11 races on both days. Yeah, got it. As you can see from the extent of my celebration, I won a small bet on one of the first races of the day. Jay's pony picks didn't do so well at the start, but I think he ended up with a profit eventually once all the races were over. Me, on the other hand, I probably should have reverted to my previous strategy of doing more place bets. If you're unfamiliar with horse racing, a place bet is when you pick a horse to finish in the top three. You may not win much, but you have better odds of making a small profit. After each race, you usually have about a 30 to 40 minute window to register your bets for the next race. Here are the betting slips that you can use to make your selections. On the left is the English version, and on the right is the Korean one. I like to use the Korean version since you can put three bets on one card, while the English version only lets you put two bets. Though you can place as many bets as you like, you just have to use multiple betting slips to do so. Usually, I only place three bets per race, so one Korean betting slip is enough for me. You fill out each section of the card using a pen. Fill in the city, day, race number, bet type, your horse picks, and wager amount. On this card, I made three separate bets. For the first bet, I picked pony number six to win and wagered 4,000 won. For the second bet, I picked pony number nine to win and wagered 4,000 won again. And for the last bet, I did a 2,000 won trio bet on pony numbers six, eight, and nine to finish in any order in the top three. For more information on the types of bets, check out the link in the description after watching the video. Once you're ready to register your bets, let's walk through the process on how to do it. First, you need to take your cash to the counter and the staff will give you a piece of paper equivalent in value. In this case, I exchanged 10,000 won in cash for 10,000 won on the paper slip. 
Next, you go to one of these machines to place your bets. Insert the paper slip with the money on it into the machine first. Then, insert the betting slip with the selections that you made. The machine will display your selections on the screen. Push the button, as seen on the display, to register the bets. The machine will eject your bets on a paper slip like this. If any of your bets win, simply take this piece of paper to the counter after the race and exchange it for your cash winnings. After placing my bets, I walked over to the paddock, the area where the ponies and their jockeys parade in front of the audience. I sometimes watch them here before placing my bets, but for this race, I was going purely on their past statistics and racing history. You can view the racing history of the ponies and the jockeys by picking up a paper like the people here are holding before entering the race park. Alternatively, you can also view the stats on the Let's Run website. There is free Wi-Fi available at the race park, so you can easily access the internet. I'll put a link to the website in the video description as well, if you want to have a look later. After watching the ponies at the paddock, let me take you on a walk through the grandstand area to see what else is around the vicinity.
My bets for the rest of the day didn't do so well, but it was still fun entertainment for an afternoon on the island. After I lost again on the last race, we went over to the other side of the racetrack to the park area called Happy Land. For those of you who aren't into gambling as much, you may prefer spending the afternoon on this side, while your friends and family members with gambling addictions bet their life savings on the ponies. They have some fun structures for kids to play on and some green park areas to explore. Check out what else you can see in Happy Land inside Cheju Racecourse Park. I hope you enjoy the experience and the tour of Cheju Racecourse Park. If you don't have a car, you can always catch a taxi or public bus just outside the main gates of the racecourse. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment to let me know what you think. See you in the next episode.